But let's go to Brother Osama, back to a few okay. callers, and we're going to end with Brother Emery. Well, let's look together here on uh, what the Quran, uh, not what the Quran, what the Hadith mm -hmm. teach about slavery. Uh, as we see, uh, uh, first Hadith I'd like to share with you is, uh, we're going to go ahead, and you know what, brother, I'm going to play them quickly, and I don't yeah. take too much time. Here yeah. we go. Maimuna bint al Hadis freed a slave girl without taking the permission of the Prophet. She said, do you know, O Allah's Apostle, that I have freed my slave girl? He said, have you really? She said, yes. He said, you would have got more reward if you had given her to one of your maternal uncles. You know, when Muslim in America tell me that Muhammad used to buy slaves so he can set them free, yeah. I fall in love with Muhammad. But when I read a hadith like this, like this, it tell me that this lady free a slave girl. And Muhammad said, have you really did this? Hmm. You get more reward, you get more reward if you can get, if you had given her to one of your uncles. Yeah. That mean, does this encourage slavery? Absolutely not. Next one. We, we don't take anyone. <laughs> obviously, the understanding from this what? Uh, uh, Muhammad uh, uh, obviously wasn't interested in freeing slaves. Right. Next yes. one here. Hadith. We're watching together. At the door of Muhammad's room, there was a slave to whom I went and said, ask permission for me to enter. What do we learn from this hadith? It's internal evidence yeah. that in Muhammad's house, he had a slave at the door. Yeah. Can you get me permission from your master, Muhammad, so I come in? That's just a simple hadith. How why, about why, next why, why would he have slaves in his house? If, if he, he won't freeze them. If, yeah. 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 if yeah. he freezes. How about this next one? So obviously Muhammad here, uh, the, the, he owns slave himself and his house. How about this one? The prophet had their warriors killed, their offspring and women taken as slaves. What is that? Internal evidence from the saying of uh, narrative Anas here that Muhammad killed the men, takes the female as slave. Period. End of story. Yeah. How about this next one? So obviously here Muhammad was uh, killed and encouraged people to slave. Here's the next one. It's very important. Listen carefully to this one, my dear brothers. The contractual obligation of a slave is three days. If he finds defect in the slave within three days, he may return it without any evidence. If he finds a defect after three days, he will be required to produce evidence that the slave had the defect when he brought it. Talking about Sharia, Islamic law, I'm going to buy a slave. Within three days, into, you know, like what, what, what you call here, uh, taking a slave in a test drive. Three yeah. days, yeah. try him out. <laughs> yeah. You find anything wrong with him, you can turn him back. Mm -hmm. What happened if a week later I discovered that his left foot is a little bit crooked? Mm -hmm. You have to prove. You have to prove that the broken foot come happened before you bought it you're not the one who broke the foot how about this next one and we used to sell our slaves and the mothers of our children and the apostle of allah was alive among us and he did not see any wrongdoing in that are you following me here believers used to sell the slave including the mothers of their children so he have a, a female slave and he have sex with her he got her pregnant, and he sell her. And Muhammad did not say, that's not a nice thing to do. It was absolutely accepted by Allah and by Muhammad. And I stop here. You mm. know, j just real quickly, can, can you imagine any of this stuff being uh, imputed to Jesus? Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> I mean, just think about that. You know, you know we, we, we already have a preconceived right. idea of Muhammad from what we know about him. And you hear this stuff, and it's terrible. But nevertheless... We know about Muhammad, what he's done. Mm -hmm. We've studied it. You get somebody, uh, now we know about Jesus. Man never even touched a woman in the sense of sexual. Okay? Simply, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's night and day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you can't get for as far as the east is from the west is mm -hmm. a description of Jesus or Muhammad. And that's why we have the title of the show. People call in and say, why do you say Jesus or Muhammad? You should never compare them. One's God, mm -hmm. one's a terrible man. Yeah. We're not comparing them. We're telling you Muslims are wrong. You can't have Jesus and Muhammad. You got to have Jesus or Muhammad. It's night and day. It's, it's just complete contrast. Why don't we try to take a few callers and then the rest of the time is going to be yours, Pastor Emery. I'm going to turn it over to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you got no, some no. good stuff. No, I'm no. going to tell him to mute out his microphone. <laughs> Let's see if we can take at least a couple more callers and then come back to you, Pastor Emery, because I, I do okay. want you to speak a little bit more about yeah. how this has affected black Americans, especially in the last hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next caller right now. Welcome, you're on the air. 
with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello, this is Jabari. I called last time. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, go right Uh, ahead. Um, uh, you, some of, one of the callers talked about discrimination. It goes back to something that the Reverend Billy Graham said, mm-hmm. and I agree with, is that the sad thing is in America, the most, most, um, segre- racially segregated hour of the day is 11 o'clock on, 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Mm-hmm. That's the sad part. Yeah. And what's even yeah. sad is that, is, uh, is that the, that the least, racially segregated day is like 6 p.m. on Friday when the when the Muslims go to the mosque and yeah. stuff like that. So, so also, also it's kind of like, again, like what I said, this stuff you guys are saying needs to be common knowledge because if every black person in America knew this, they would, no one would, no other black person would ever convert to Islam. Yeah. That's everything. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's, yeah. Amen. That's everything I have to say. God bless yeah. Thank bless you, friends. Jabari. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, and, and he's right, isn't he? He's exactly right. Not just, not just on this topic. Yeah. If people in America in Jordan know the truth about it, for all the mm-hmm. women, yeah. for all the females yeah. in America yeah. who believe in Islam, all what they have learned about women in Islam, it is the 180 degrees opposite. If, if our audience go on our website, the straightway.org, and order DVD, Women in Islam, You'd be shocked in this one and a half hour DVD, the number of lies. Literally, what I do in this presentation is I will show you in the uh, article of Dr. Uh, Rukiya Abdul Maksud. And this is a lady, British woman. She became a Muslim. She taught this in England. She led hundreds and thousands of young ladies in England to Islam. And now they're teaching her material in America. And I go, hear what Rukiya said. Here is what Allah in the Quran said. Here is what Rukiya said. Here is what Muhammad said. The opposite. And that's how many women in America are becoming Muslim, because they believe a lie. I want to get that DVD, and I bet I'm you callers you. do too. Go to <laughs> thestraightway.org yeah. of Brother Osama Dr. Duke, and I encourage you to support his ministry and at the same time get this vital information that is most needed. Let's take another caller uh, right now. I welcome you on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Uh, hello, Pastor Joseph. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Hi, it's it's Ronnie again. How are you guys? Doing good, good Ronnie. Go right ahead, brother. Um, I have a question uh, about the slavery thing in Islam. Um, mm. w- what have what is their fate? Are, are they also saved by the Islamic faith? W- we'll, well, we oh. know that saved. that you know they're not really sure. Uh, you know, Muslims aren't really sure if they're saved or not. But what is the fate of the slaves at, uh, I guess, at that time when this was really uh, prominent within Islam? What was the fate of the slaves? That's a good question, right? And, and if they weren't saved or, you know, if they weren't Muslims, then what does that say uh, according to the teachings of Islam of the the owners who are Muslim interacting with these pagans in such a manner as in sex or yeah. whatever other manner. What does that say about them? Those are I, good. I was just curious about that. We'll, we'll take those right now, Ronnie. Thank you for your call. And uh, we're going to go to Brother Osama. But Brother Osama, I'd say first and foremost, most of the slaves we see in Islam are women. And Muhammad said that the, uh, yeah. most of the people in hell are women. <laughs> but first of all, the word yeah. save, the word save does not exist in Islam. I know in America yeah. here, I hear so many wonderful Muslim men and women who come to me and say, I was saved four years ago. Said, Excuse me, what? Mm. I became a Muslim four years ago. I was saved four years ago. Save. Not even so many Christians use the statement. There are many Christians by name. They yeah. don't believe in the word save, yeah. sadly. <laughs> so the word save does not ex- exist in Islam. Yeah. All Muslim, hear me, hear me good. All Muslims will burn in hell for yeah. some time. Yeah. And then Allah will remove from hell those whom he chooses. Yeah. Uh, very, 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 that's very important. The only one who is saved in Islam is the jihadist. Uh, do not consider those who die for the sake of Allah as dead. Nay, they are alive in the, with the Lord receiving their provision. So the only person can be saved, the one who commits suicide, which according to our Bible, they are committing suicide and they were burning hell. Mm. So uh, nobody is saved. And 99, like Brother Joseph said, 99% of women 
Muslim women, 99% of them will burn in hell. So I don't know if the slave have any chance. Yeah. And if we talk about uh, uh, Africans, we know that in, uh, goodness, Christianity mm -hmm. reached Africa before Islam did. A lot of folks uh, don't understand it in many cases uh, in Islamic thought. Some want to have a revised history. Mm -hmm. The Ethiopians fought off the Islamic invaders in the 6th and 7th century, about 200 years, yeah. till finally they had to succumb. Uh, some of the early church fathers yeah. were from North, uh, from North uh, Africa, Augusta, East Africa. Yes. Yeah, one of the biggest, exactly. the main one. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it was jihad that took away uh, Christianity. And there's yeah. no such a thing as the word revert. No. Revert Islam, the lies they give to the black brothers in America and, the yeah. bl and, and, <laughs> and black sisters. They said, come back to Islam. You were never a Muslim in Africa. No. You were a Christian or some idol worshiper. But Adam, you were never, yeah. all the people come from the yeah. heart of Africa. They were Christian or non-believers non of right, anything. Right. But Elijah Muhammad says in yeah. message to the black man that the black man is by nature a Muslim. Yeah. Oh, and, and Pastor, <laughs> By nature. Well, well, well I, I understand in, in Nation of Islam theology, Allah is, is pure black. Well, And yeah. Satan is pure white. Well, what happens is uh, yeah. uh, Wallace Fard, who yeah. actually started about 1929, 1930. And by the way, he wasn't black. Right. He, yeah, he, was, he, was, he was like Arab or something or yeah. Indonesian. And it, yeah, he came talking, uh, you know, the lost and found tribe of Shabazz. To Detroit. And, to Detroit. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In 1930. And, and in fact, the white man was created by a god called Yakub. Yeah. So he, it was an experiment that went the wrong. The evil scientist Yakub. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Elijah Muhammad uh, said also, and this is why you have the big break yeah. uh, in uh, the black community with those who left the Nation of Islam to go to World Islam because of the racist nature yeah. of the Nation of Islam. Yeah. Uh, because the understanding uh, was, Elijah Muhammad said, that the white whites would not be accepted in Islam. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, Europeans. Well, you, have to, you have to be black. You have yeah, you have to be black. Uh, so that caused a big split between uh, Wallace's, uh, Elijah Muhammad's son and yeah. Farrakhan, Farrakhan has changed though, because yeah. he knows he's got to get mainstream to get in the audience. Mm. But uh, it's really. But, brother, but you can hear in Lowe's Farrakhan teach. Even when he, he speaks. He you can see the hate. The racism is still the there. The racism yeah. is over. still you there. You can see it in Jeremiah Wright. Yeah. The racism, racism is still there. there. It doesn't yeah. matter if you are a claim to be a Christian like Jeremiah Wrong or Jeremiah Wright, <laughs> or if you are Lowe's Farrakhan. Yeah. The, the black it's hate the same, yeah. towards right. Christianity depend on their hate towards it, white. It's a, it's a racist black empowerment right. uh, yeah. philosophy. Well, can you imagine if, if when we look at it, and I don't want to get political here, but if John McCain, yeah. when he was running against Barack Obama, yeah. had he went to a church that taught white values, yeah. oh, white oh. morality, <laughs> can, can you believe it? Uh, can you history. Believe it? The they they would have disqualified yeah, him yeah. from the presidency. The but yeah. but here Obama can go to a church that yeah. talks about black values, yeah. black morality, and not only that, goddamn but, but, America. Yeah, yeah, and give an award yeah. to Louis Farrakhan, yeah. the leader of one of the most racist organizations there's ever been, and the media hardly said anything. Yeah. It is amazing, but that lets yeah. you know where we are. Yeah. Uh, well, well speaking of that, we only have about 12 minutes left in the program. I know we may have a couple callers left, but Pastor Emery, I, I, am not, I refuse to allow this program to go by without you sharing a little bit more. Uh, I, I know we have some black Americans out there watching this program. Some of them may very well be Muslim. I'm almost positive we got some. What, what would you say to these people in the fact that, you know, share for your heart as, as, a, as a black American Christian, that, I mean, as a Christian, but, but that they can understand and hear you. I mean, they hear me, they hear him, they hear white guys. But hear you, tell them, look, you've been duped. You know, they, they, they need to see that from you, and, and you have seen it yourself firsthand in, in this area. And if they have not saw the first two parts, I beg you, uh, we need them to go and watch the whole yeah. entire series. And, and it's on yeah. ABN set. Uh, yes. you, can, you can see all of these programs cached whenever you want on the internet, internet set, www.abnsat.com. Now, I'm going to shut up, and we'll cut Osama's microphone, <laughs> and Pastor Henry Moss has got to talk. But, but, but I'm here to tell you, the last thing I want to do is cut Osama's microphone. I no, know. No, I, no, I want to no. advise everyone <laughs> to get a copy of this and quit reading The Son of a Gun, yeah. Yusuf Ali. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, and yeah. uh, I have some different versions, too. I don't yeah. have this one, though. You yeah. and, so, and he's so humble. I really, I really, yeah. because, he, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. You, you, you watched him. He didn't even want to admit that he did this yeah. translation. Yeah. Uh, so definitely we need it. But uh, in fact, what he has said is the very information that many uh, African-Americans need. They yeah. need to know that this Islam that you're embracing, this is what it's all about.